Montenegro. This tiny country is located in southeastern Europe and is the smallest Slavic country with only 30,812 square kilometers. As estimated in 2010, it populates a bit over 620,000 people. Budva is the most visited city in Montenegro and is sometimes mistaken as a capital. However, the capital of Montenegro and the biggest city is Podgorica. It populates 187,000 people. Cetinje is designated as the old royal capital called Prestolnica. Although Montenegro is small in its size, its history and the revolts are not. Let's take a quick look. In the year 1042, Stefan Vojislav led a revolt that resulted in the independence of Duklia under the Vojislavievich dynasty. Ward Zeta replaced Duklia when referring to the realm until the 15th century, when the word Cerna Gora or in Venetian Montenegro replaced Zeta. Perhaps the most interesting part of Montenegrin history is their uprising against the giant Ottoman Empire. Let's start from the beginning. In the 16th century, Montenegro developed a unique form of autonomy within the Ottoman Empire, permitting Montenegrin clans freedom from certain restrictions. Montenegrins, however, were rather unhappy being under the Ottoman rule and raised numerous rebellions. Montenegrin tactic was simple yet effective. If the Turks came with a couple of thousand soldiers, Montenegrins defended. If Turks came with a bigger force, Montenegrins burned all, moved up to the mountains and let the enemy starve. In the year of 1830, Peter II Petrovich Njegos united all the Montenegrins clans and established a senate. Montenegro became a theocracy led by metropolitan. In the year of 1858, Montenegrins have won the Battle of Krahovac against the Ottomans. Grand Duke Mirko Petrovich led an army of 7,500 men and defeated the numerically superior Ottomans who had 15,000 troops. This great victory later on caused de facto recognizing Montenegro's independence. Now there's seriously a lot more to it, and I might actually start a new series in the future that will focus more on the history, however for now that's not a history lesson and we gotta move on. Montenegro is, as you can probably figure out from its name very mountainous. It has a lot to offer, but let's take a look at some sites I consider worth visiting. Sveti Nikola, the largest Montenegrin island. Durmitor National Park. Kotor and Kotor Bay. Njegoš Mausoleum Ostrog Monastery Lake Skadar Porto Montenegro And my favorite Sveti Stefan Island now that we've seen that, let's take a look at some traditional Montenegrin dishes. Popeci from Podgorica Montenegrin lamb in milk. Karzamak. Now let's hear Montenegrin language. There is just another variant between Serbian and Croatian. Oružje uvijek bilo u tradiciji Crnogoraca, pa nam ta tradicija i daje za pravo da oružje i proizvodimo u Crnoj Gori. That my friends has been all. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you for watching.